Hi all, this video is to show you basically how I use my uh, scan, book scanner uh, for scanning large pictures. Now bear in mind that this video at the moment here is a reenactment of uh, what happened in the past and everything you see in front of you are paid actors. So bear that in mind. So uh, this is only a simulation. The way it works or way I decide to, to do it is I jammed a piece of well, blueprint between a sheet of paper and a bit of uh, MDF. Use this T-square, line that up there and moving this T-square along steadily, if I can, took a scan, move the T-square back, move that down to cover the bits that I missed. And then took another scan, uh, moved that along, took another scan. Naturally, in between, I pressed buttons here and there, but however, this is just to give you an idea of where all this idea started from. Back again. Here we are in 2016, and that primitive little T squared design has turned into this little magical swan. It's a piece of MDF, big piece of MDF. There's a bit of a recess, a sheet of glass which holds the uh, plans down and uh, provides a nice smooth surface for the scanner to move across. The T square has turned into this monstrosity. As always, you know, I like to over engineer things. And that doesn't look like a T-square in any way, shape or form. It's gear driven. The concept of the gears are that once you start turning both the gear underneath, these two gears here, uh, move at the same speed that engages this rat down the bottom here and advances both the top and the bottom of this uh, little sled at the same speed. Um, now, quick design of this item, um, all these gears are with the dowel held in by this little plug. There's a 22mm skateboard uh, bearing in the middle there just to make this move just that little bit easier. And they're all dismantleable except for these two gears um, because of the fact that they aren't allowed to slip at all. I've actually physically glued them together so... If ever they have to be replaced, I've got to physically cut it with uh, a saw, take it out, and then replace and re-glue. Now, the way this jig is really designed to work is you'll find that the distance between the two racks here is just a fraction bigger, so the jig fits in easily that end and moves along. However, I like to try and push my luck and see, this is a very tight fit, this end, because that's about a sixteenth wider, and I have trouble fitting it, and here we are, if you get it exactly right, the gear is exactly right, it's not an issue, ah, there you are, actually that popped in relatively easily. Also, you'll notice on here, hopefully the camera shows it, you'll notice that uh, there are markings on there to show you which direction to spin it. Because I've always found whenever you play around with gears, they always seem to go the opposite direction to what you think they're going to go. Like twisting it anti-clockwise, you think you're going to be, well, sorry, rephrase that. Twisting it clockwise, you think you're going to advance it. But here, because of the gearing, it goes this way. If I had another gear in there, then it would go the other direction. But I just found I had these gears, um, they fit, um, and I left it at that. Okay, now how this mechanism works, you move this sled up or the holder for the scanner. Let's get the scanner. Um, I introduced the scanner before, but effectively this is how it works. You hold the button for a few seconds, it turns it on and you can see all this little gizmo here. To activate it, you press the button, this little green light goes on, which means it's in scan mode. You do your scan, when you finish with your scan, you press the button again and... That's it, it records that scan. For the next scan you press and unpress and go through that for all the scans. Now this little scanner is designed to fit into this jig. 
once you want to take a scan, you press the button to turn it on, advance it the right way, and effectively the speed doesn't matter that much. The scanner itself is driven by a set of rollers underneath, and it's the movement of the rollers that determine the quality and the size of your print, not so much the speed. However, if you advance the scanner too fast, it will register a software error. Anyway, once you've done that, you move this down here, and fortunately there's just sufficient overlay to cover this A2 blueprint in two passes and still provide sufficient overlay for stitching later on. And again, off you go and zip along and zippity doo da. You've got it, switch it off and bring the little unit back again. And really, that's the uh, scanner in a nutshell. There you can see the rollers there. Um, attach it to your PC, get some software to stitch it together, and Bob's your uncle. And when you, if you notice that uh, it does move very smoothly, smooth as a baby's bum, this, and it's a very nice little action. And basically through the gears, now bear in mind, there's nothing to stop you from uh, cutting similar type of wheels out, out of, uh, you on the scroll saw, naturally you wouldn't have as many teeth, and it might go just quite as smooth but it will actually work quite easily however I'm not advocating you make one of these scanners or whatever because otherwise you'd have, if you made one you'd have to go out and buy yourself a handheld scanner not everybody wants one but you can use this concept in your workshop for other jigs other items and if you make your gears out of fairly solid hardwood timber and make your teeth quite chunky and all that you'll be surprised how much pressure you can exert and that software that I've pointed you to before and I'll point you to it again will permit you to design whatever size gears you like or within reason of course print them off and then cut them out on your woodworking machinery thank you for that